Hey everybody, what goes on? And welcome to This About Action Figures, bringing you episode three of The X-Files. Yes, our new show here on This About Action Figures here on YouTube, where we go back and rewatch one of the greatest cartoons. No, not cartoons. Greatest television shows. No, greatest media projects ever made. X-Men, the animated series. It is so near to my heart and yours as well. Every week bringing you a special guest to talk about each sequential episode. So far we've done episode one and two. Shout out and thank you to the great Art G and Dante, Dark Joker Zen, for being our first two special guests. But not going to keep this thing going. We're going to bring the special guest into the room right away. Just started to get to know this guy over the last year. One of the coolest dudes I know. Definitely the coolest Canadian that I know. Oh, yeah, Kevin, if you hear this, he's a cool Canadian. Okay? Holding it down north of the border. He is the Canadian card collector himself. Love those retro cards. The man. Your friend, I'm glad to stay mine, Mr. Action Figure Skinny, the real action figure skinny. Sir, how are you? I'm great, man. How you doing, bud? How you doing? Dude, I am so just, oh, thank you for coming on, man. Sharing your time with us here on the channel. So great to have you here. Happy to be here, man. Happy to be here. Uh, Yeah, north of the wall, as we like to call it. Um, <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, man, talking at X-Men. Yeah, man, definitely. Again, uh, if you're new to the channel... Uh, Figgy has become a, a contributor over at the Infinity Equation podcast, where I am as well. So I've gotten to the man relatively well on the show there. Obviously, a big X Men fan. We've we've talked on the show before. We wanted to do something together uh, in the future. So when I started this show, you're one of the first names that I thought of that I had to get on here, sir. Appreciate it. I mean, as you can see, I'm a big X Men fan. I love X Men. My room is covered in X Men stuff. So yeah, I'm always down to speak on my favorite Children's of the Atom. That's Amen. incredible. And thank you so much again. All right. So again, if you're new, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go through the episode. I took some screen grabs. We both have watched to kind of more or less reacclimate ourselves to what happens in the episode, kind of give you our hot takes. We'll talk about our favorite moments, kind of just go through bit by bit. Then at the very end, we'll go over our favorite moments, favorite characters, favorite quotes. Uh, I asked that all of you please participate in the chat. Uh, I've really started this thing. It's almost like a Oprah Winfrey book club where I'd love for you guys to be watching this along uh, with us at home. Or if you're new to this show, you're new to the X-Men animated series, maybe you just want to kind of get acquainted with it, being that X-Men 97 will be coming around the corner more quickly than you believe, which will be a, a basically a sequel to the show we grew up watching. Uh, Figgy, if you could just share with the audience, sir, you know, what are your thoughts, your your memories? You know, what does X-Men animated series mean to you as a collector and as a fan? Uh, it was always a series that, as a child, I liked it, but it always made me wanting, left me wanting more. I always wanted to explain where things were coming from, the characters. Um, being that I had a history with X Men previously, I knew that there was characters that were like missing and not really featured in the cartoon as much as they were featured in comics and whatnot. So I was very much always trying to figure out what was going on with them. But this was before the internet. So, um, yeah, it always left me curious, and I always really liked the colorful characters and what they brought to the show. Wait, you're saying there wasn't always an internet? Yeah. Like, we didn't always have, like, smartphones that could just, like, look up anything we wanted at any time? De come on, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh... It, it, it worries me, because I've come across youths, as my cousin Vinny would say, youths uh, <laughs> out there, if you get the reference, I hope, but... um. Who, who literally don't know like pre cell phone or, you know, so it's, it's always crazy when, when I get talking to somebody and we refer to like the dark days before you can go online. So it's dark always days. Fun I loved it. We're the last of the Mohicans, man. We are, we are, especially we're considered the elders. When things go down, they look to us because of like what we do. So I'm happy. <laughs> if it goes down. They won't be able to handle it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> basically. Basically. All right. So let's say hello to some people who were here and then we will get into the episode uh g force racing in the house how you doing sir hey Thanks. great picture i love that show hell yeah man good, good friend of the channel lucas is here because where's the show lucas i was still setting up we got it going man you know me i'm always messing around over here doing action figure stuff uh we also have in the chat let's who jumped in here eric's here what's going on eric how you doing sir is that your last name your eric your last name is eric living good stop it that's amazing if that's your real name shouts to you <laughs> Big shouts to you, Eric. Living good. Wow, that's a great name. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's awesome. Every wow. time I see him in the chat, I think the exact same thing. Uh, Lucas says, "I just watched episode three within the last hour. I'm still surprised by how well the show holds up." We will talk about that. Um, oh, Figgy, I, I, I said this to Dante the other week. You know, I, I, I watched this show before multiple times, but mm -hmm. I've never gone through like 
you know, frame by frame, like I'm doing now to screen grab, mm -hmm. there's just some amazing animation, just moments on the show, little transitions, which we'll point out tonight. It's so good. They throw in a lot. They do for what they had and the constraints they had. They did try to throw in a lot. Excellent. De definitely, sir. Absolutely. All right. So again, if you're new, what we basically do is I do have a very classy, very professional Google slides right here. <laughs> we will very, very sophisticated here and just had action figures. We are at the we are at the, the epitome of technology figgy here on my channel. As you are. Uh, I, I'm lucky I can actually mash buttons over here to be honest. <laughs> so um as I said earlier, you know, thanks again for Figgy for being here. We'll talk about our socials at the end. Uh participate. I have this slide on her every week, everybody. Um, whether you're catching it on the playback, whether you're watching it live, whether you're watching this sometime in the near future. Um you know, leave a comment down below, but you know, we're, this show, one of the best parts about it is it brings us together as a, as a collection family, as a group of collectors, you know, as people have watched this show. So please feel free to participate. I'm going to try to show as many chats as I can as we work our way through, but feel free to talk it up. So Figgy, our first segment every week is, as you might guess, previously on X-Men. Yeah, you can add. On X-Men. I'm going to get you that sound bite. <laughs> Dude, yes. Just don't get the mouse after me. I'm already worried about the fact I'm taking screen grabs off of Disney+. Plus. <laughs> no mouse coming after you for that. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm a little, little, little small for that right now. They're too busy worried about uh, their other issues. But all right. So last week, we finished up the two-part episode, um, which which was uh, Night of the Sentinels. Um, ended on a happy note, uh, even though we had a lot of crying figgy. They were like, every character cried in episode two, basically. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of that because of our buddy Morph who got morphed. <laughs> R.I.P. Pour some out for one's more foamy. Um, yeah, man, he bit the dust, which as we watched this episode, Figgy, it, what really hit me was that even as a kid, I now knew there were stakes in this show. Yeah. They they killed somebody right out of the gate. So even what? watching this episode, I'm like, somebody else going to die? <laughs> right. I was always wondering, as because we've seen other mutants get blasted by their hand beams before. So I was just like, what was, what was wrong with Morph? Or he couldn't take that direct hit. Meanwhile, <laughs> I've seen other mutants take it and, and get back up. So, yeah. I'll give you two reasons. He was skipping leg day in the gym, and he was skipping oh. danger room sessions in order to watch 100% skipping danger room sessions. Yeah, we saw it in the first episode. Yeah, exactly. They're working hard, and he's messing around, dressing up like strangers. Um, mm -hmm. so, so basically, we ended on a good note where Jubilee, who's like our, who's basically our point of view character, she's meant to be us in the show. Uh, she now has a home with the X Men. And it kind of allows us uh, coming out of those two first episodes that that pilot, if you will, to kind of move along uh, into more area for the show. So, uh, Figgy, we open up here uh, at the prison. We know that Beast survived his zapping uh, on the electric fence, and he's reading uh, Animal, Animal Farm, chilling. <laughs> he's reading Animal Farm, man. And can I just say these two guys out there, these bozos, right? These two dweebs are like, look at them <laughs> trying to read. The, there must be pictures in there. Ugh, awful. <laughs> um, Figgy, did you ever read uh, or see the cartoon adaption of uh, The Dark Knight Returns? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So those guys that are like the mutants that walk around. Oh, man. Yeah. Are those guys the same voices? Or the same? It's very similar. Like, I, I, I never picked up on that until recently. I'm like. These guys even talk like them. They're just dweeb, yeah. you know? But, but we get these two scumbags who are ripping on Beast. Uh, Beast being the awesome dude that he is, is just chilling, reading his book. Uh, and then we get one of the funniest scenes in X-Men. Um, we have a blast outside. Uh, mm -hmm. There's clearly a prison break taking place. And this gentleman's belt just kind of magically disappears, Figgy. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. So, you know, very, very uh, interesting photo here. This, this guy here got his... Uh, come up in here for being a, a dweeb, being a jerk, loses his pants, runs away. <laughs> and this is the big reveal to what's going to be one of our main antagonists of the series, which is Magneto. Uh, Figgy, talk a little bit about how he's kind of pictured here. I, I love this animation version of him. Uh, he's pictured to be very kind of like, I kind of like almost not so much dark, but very, very, how do you say, intimidating. I like how they like, they, they normally never do this in the show, but they've just blacked out his entire mask and then they only show his eyes, which to add, um, this is a technique they don't use very often in the show, which I find that they should use more often, but they don't. Um, I feel like all the comic iterations should basically just show Magneto looking like this, unless he's like, you know, 
very prominent, but mm-hmm. also the helmet would have to make much more sense and have to be 10 times bigger. But he looks very intimidating, very, 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 very not evil, but just you could tell he's a, a powerful person, dude. Hundred percent, exactly why I clipped this man right on the same page with me here, sir. Yeah, I love this. It it it, it presents him as the villain, having that mm. face kind of darkened, the mystery of it. Granted, they go away from it pretty much right away here. They don't like maintain that mystery for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely love it. Uh, just joining the chat here is uh, Damien. Says greetings all. Uh, he says I am um, admit my guilt. I am 42 now, and I only just finished watching season one. Had plenty of chance to watch, but never got around in the 90s. Glad to see them now. Well, dude, Damien, this is the time, man. Burn through it with us, buddy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, great call, Fit. Yeah, I completely agree on the mask, the blacking out section there. Uh, so kind of working our way through. Um, we do get the big reveal here, you know, that it is Magneto. Um, comic fans would have known who he was. As a kid, I had no clue. I wasn't reading comics at the time. Uh, he's kind of chatting it up, and Figgy, he's essentially there to take Beast out of there, right? Yeah, he's trying to bust him out of prison, and Beast was like, nah, I'm celebrating my trial. I'm good. <laughs> he's like, I, I presume I'll be innocent. He mentions Professor X, and right away, Magneto's like, Professor Charles Xavier told you to break into that place? And he's all yeah. shocked, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but what we get here, basically, as we all know, is our warring ideologies. In the first two episodes, you know, we get the the techno- technological threat, we get the the bigot threat, you know, we get all the, the scumbags who, who don't like mutants because they're different, right? But here we get something different. Here we get the first opportunity where other mutants are going to have different ideologies about what their view uh, of humanity is. Um, Figgy, yeah. can you spare, uh, share with the audience the difference between basically Magneto and Xavier's philosophies? Xavier feels like all humans and mutants should... Okay, to really break it down. Xavier is the Martin Luther King in the situation. He feels like all the children and boys and girls of different races and mutants and humans should all play together and be rejoice and be unified in the world and so on. Magneto is the Malcolm X in the situation where he's like, nah, <laughs> we're superior and they're eventually going to try to kill us. So we should kill them first. And that's how Magneto, basically, that's how Magneto stays. Yeah, good call, man. Yeah. So Magneto, definitely more militant view of things. His take on it is let's take them out yes. before they take us out, right? Yes. Um, very. So he shows up, and we'll get some backstory here with him and Xavier. Obviously, this alludes to the fact that the audience, for the first time, there is a backstory there. Um, but he's basically trying to recruit more mutants to his cause, which will be an unfolding story uh, throughout the rest of the narrative of season one. Um, Biggie, I love how we get Magneto's uh, just basically that 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 power, that OP ability right out the gate. He starts ripping people apart and things apart right away. <laughs> and this is not even like, <laughs> I love how this is not even like the just of what he could do. And they're just like, he's so powerful, but he could do so much more. <laughs> it's great. That's why I love Eric. It's just a little tease of what his powers are. Uh, so we cut away and find out that uh, Professor X and Jubilee are watching the replay on the news, essentially, and what happened. And this is where we do get our flashback to where Charles, and as you mentioned, Eric, uh, being his actual name, uh, flashing back to when they were basically younger. Uh, we get the first chance, if, if you didn't know the comics, this is the first time we know Xavier was out of the wheelchair at one point. Um, mm-hmm. He has the creepy eyebrows even back then. Um, mm-hmm. And they basically reveal their powers to each other for the first time in trying to save different people. Um, this, however, is where, to what you talked to about earlier, Figgy, we get this split in ideology very early on between Xavier and Letcher. Um, mm-hmm. As you very eloquently explained, um, they are they don't agree that things should be handled the same way. Um, can you share just kind of briefly why Magneto is kind of more hardcore with the way he views things? I believe if the show sticks to the comics, but from my knowledge, is that Magneto's family and himself were taken prisoner as he was young and they were kind of put through like really crazy trials. Don't know if it's linked to World War II don't know if it's linked to a certain thing that starts sliding timeline <laughs> yeah yep. but yeah so he kind of yeah <laughs> magneto kind of been through it versus xavier who maybe came from a more lavish luxurious life where he kind of had the his parents had the money to kind of keep him out of search certain situations so he didn't really kind of see it as rough as magneto did yep. yeah man definitely um i mentioned earlier I love taking some screen grabs. I never even noticed this, to be honest, earlier on. As we kind of like have this more or less montage of, of uh, Eric turning into Magneto, 
we get this really cool kind of image where he's walking in the lab coat that we first saw him in, in the flashback. Mm. And he slowly, again, just kind of transforms into the Magneto costume. And I just thought this fade effect in the animation was so cool looking Figgy. It looks great. Yeah, man. Uh, that was really good. Quick question here coming from Damien. Uh, he wants to know, Figgy, who are your favorite X-Men villain and hero? Oh. So I'm looking at all my X-Men villains right now. Favorite X-Men villain? Yikes. Oh. It's tough, right? There's Hell of the Rhodes Gallery. <laughs> you know, because each... Okay, the thing about the X-Men Rogues Gallery is that each individual villain kind of attacks slash goes after a singular X-Men. So there isn't really one that goes after the group of them unless you're talking about Hellfire Club... Mr. Sinister, but he really only focuses on Scott and Jean. Madeline Pryor, but she's not featured in this show, and that was during Inferno when the team wasn't even the team. Juggernaut hates Professor X. Uh, so, villain? Apocalypse. That's a good one, man. What about your favorite X-Men in general? Colossus, hands down. I probably <laughs> close second. Archangel no, after. Uh, Cable? Nah, 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 nah. Cable's too OP. Like, Cable's great, but like... Oh, you know what I mean? Like his whole situation is like, I could be the greatest, most powerful mutant in the world, except for I'm using my tele, tele my my greatest ability. I'm using it to hold back a techno organic virus that would otherwise eat my body in flesh. Oh, who'd you say number two was? Or I missed it. Then I'm sorry. Oh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. I'm sorry. I thought you said Cable. Yeah, dude. Great, great choices. Which probably shows me you enjoyed the arcade game as a kid, possibly. See, again, so that's where the confusion came from. I have an older sister, six years older, and she was like, oh, man, this isn't the X-Men to this cartoon. My X-Men was much better. They had this character called Dazzler. They had Nightcrawler. They had Colossus. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then I saw the arcade. I'm like, oh, so this is what, we, what my sister's talking about. But it was she was talking about a, a cartoon. She remembers it as a full-edged cartoon. What she was talking about was part of the X-Men. That was one episode. Yes, sir. So that's that's that just tells you the impact that Pride of the X Men had on like a then six year old of a, someone who was born in 1979. That was my sister, and come on, like it was one episode, and she remembered it as like a whole series, is grandiose thing. Which is when you see Pride of the X Men, it's quite impressive. Oh yeah. And then for it to jump into this, you are wondering, like myself, I was where's Colossus? Where's Nightcrawler? <laughs> yeah. Where's Dazzler? Like I like these X Men, but just. So when they brought in the other guys later, which you'll get to, and I won't ruin it for those who are watching as we talk, it's kind of disappointing when you're like, oh, there's Colossus, but he's not there. <laughs> they, they didn't make us wait quite as long for Colossus as they did Nightcrawler, right? Oh. That was a little longer to wait. I, I told you the story before of how I lost it when they, the opening, like, because, you know, X-Men, the opening credits, it starts, and then they cut to black, and then it starts, and it shows the name of the episode. So that particular episode where he's featured, it's like season three, episode one, this is season premiere. And yeah, it's just simply called Nightcrawler. I lost it, lost it. As a girl, as a little kid, I was like, ah, Nightcrawler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was great. It's so awesome, and that's the. I mean, that's that's obviously every episode we'll talk about cameos and things. And uh, once we get, there was, I'll have to remember bring you back to the Nightcrawler or so down the road, sir. Uh, if not for Colossus, sometime sooner. But um, that's okay. again, you mentioned how you wanted more characters and. They did. They did bring them along. They just focused more on that cat, the original cast first, and brought them in as we went, right? Yeah, which was if you were to follow the comics, this original cast was heavily based on X Men Blue Team, mm -hmm. and they just simply added Gene and Storm from Gold Team. Everyone else from Gold Team didn't exactly exist in the team, but they were featured in the show at some point, which is bothersome because you could have modern day cartoons would have just added them to the roster. You know what I mean? But I get it. I get the what they were doing. They were that glorified cameo, and then they bring them back for like the big events, basically. Right, exactly. And it's like, that's cute, but you could also just have them as like a resting member and switch out the rosters. But I mean, whatever. One day. One day we'll get a proper X-Men. A new, a new X-Men cartoon, not proper. Sounds like Marvel Ultimate Alliance thing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, did you have that game back in the day? I loved 1 and 2. I just started playing 3 two weeks ago. I have 1 and 2. But when I had one, I only had a PlayStation. Was it? Did it? Okay. So I only had a PlayStation 2. Yep. That's what I had. I didn't right? have the on 2 forever. So I didn't have the PS3 version. The PS3 version, you got Colossus right off the bat. Ooh, see, I didn't even know that. I didn't yeah. know that. And then I got the PS3 version. You couldn't get Colossus in the PS2 version. So I got Colossus in the PS3 version. Then you would have like the new X Men that was based on like Grant Morris's run at the time. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Great team. That's. 
a moment yet. But, uh, so basically we cut back and now we're going to be going to the courtroom where Beast is basically having his day in court where they're deciding whether or not they're going to let him go out on bail or basically keep him in jail. Um, we do get our cameo for the episode, which is Cameron Hodge. Is that his um, lawyer? Yes. Yep. Yep. He's v- very innocuous uh, appearance here. Um, later on, he does come back multiple times throughout the course of the series. Here, it's just kind of a tidbit. Like, I don't know, Figgy, if like they intended to have him down the road. I'm sure they wrote episodes ahead of time. Um, mm. But here, he just kind of comes across as a guy, it's a random dude, and then he ties him to Phalanx later on. I think Muir Island later on. Yes. They had to switch it up because he was like sponsoring X Factor. So, ah, uh, yes, the show is good, but I, yeah, it was very good. So good. <laughs> so, Beast kind of does one of his awesome moments where he busts out some awesome old school literature. I believe here he starts to quote William Shakespeare, the Bard. He, um, yes, he quotes The Merchant of Venice. Yeah. So, he's like, here's the deal. Uh, you know, when you prick me, do I not bleed? So on and so forth. Um, yeah, these are a bunch of a holes. <laughs> They are not having one. it. Uh, a dude gets thrown out because his brother was part of like the group that got attacked. Um, and basically the judge is like, hey, man, we're all good, but you're not getting bail. Mm-hmm. So he gets some crap thrown at him, uh, literally some 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 vegetables and whatnot. And then we get this guy. Saber dude who shows up. Yeah, man. He was a cameo. I believe it was in episode one. They showed him on the news. Yes. He was our, one of our first cameos here uh, on, at X-Files. And uh, he's raging around the room. Uh, of course, Wolverine is like, huh, no, I'm not helping him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, no, nah, I'm not. There, I love that. I love that they, because the, sh- the show, what it does is that it alludes that there is so much past and history amongst the X-Men, but it doesn't tell you really anything. So in episode three, you have Logan who's mad as heck about this random stranger on TV. And he's like, never helping him. And you're like, okay, but why? Yep. Please just tell me why. And yeah, they do tell you later, but I mean, I just find it funny how there's this like built in history into the show as if people know who the X Men were. But I guess this is for like the older adults who were reading the comments and now had kids at this point. So, so which is sense. great because it, it did show you at the time that although they were aiming it for the demographic of kids, they were also banking on the fact there were going to be older fans or comic book readers that were younger who would get the fact that you're going to get the payoff later on, basically. Yeah, we also had a lot more, like, a lot of adult content aimed at us as children. So, like, our topics and subject matter were heavy. Oh, yeah. Probably why we could deal with so much now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. Absolutely. And we talked about that the last couple of weeks where, I hey, Archie just came in. How you doing, Art? When Art was on, Dante were on, uh, we, we discussed that, where they did not pull punches. Like, they were like, yo, kids are going to watch this, and they're going to have to, like, adapt, and they're going to have to mature to this. Yeah. Uh, so basically, Sabretooth is injured by the guards at the trial. Uh, they, Cyclops insists on taking him back to the mansion. There'll be a payoff in a few episodes for that. Uh, but basically, Wolverine is pissed. So he's pissed. like, I don't want him here. I think he slices like the freaking like yeah, uh, life support oh. thing. Yeah, he's like, screw this guy, even though he knows he has the healing factor, right? Yeah. So he's like, screw this guy. I want him out of here. He's dangerous. And this is the lo- uh, Figgy, at the end, we'll say our favorite quote of the episode. This isn't mine, but it's very close. And he walks out, all pissed off, cool looking, looks over his shoulder, and he goes, why, and I'll, I'll paraphrase, but why is it that we go after, the tr- we get to trash all your old enemies? And when it's enemies. mine, yeah, we get to, yeah, actually, I do, that is probably my favorite quote. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Oh, I, I wanted to add, too. So I, I didn't put the screen grab in there, because it, it kind of skeezes me out a little bit. But mm-hmm. earlier on, Jubilee gives Xavier a kiss on the forehead and says, like, don't worry, we're here for you. Yeah. And did you read the Onslaught comic book years ago? Uh, right. Wow. Okay, I know what happens within the story. Did I read the story? No, I didn't read okay. all of it. But I know I know Xavier doesn't do well later on. He does not. And there, there's a moment, spoilers from, what, 30 years ago here? Um mm-hmm. There's a moment where we find out that before Xavier's actually on slot, that he is showing Jean Grey all this, all these old memories that he had. Mm. And she's only like a kid, like a teenager. Mm. And he has internal monologue saying that he's in love with her. Oh, yeah, I caught that. Yeah. Ex- yeah. He's been creepy since jump. He was in love with Drew, Jean from like when she got there. Yes. It was weird. So that skeezes me out when I watch this. I, I want to know who wrote that because that wasn't Claremont. Ooh, I can't remember. I want to know who wrote that. 
Because then you're like, who are you and why'd you ruin Xavier? I bet, Arch, I bet Archie knows. So let us know in the comments. Yeah, Archie, let us know. He's on. He's got that on. That or somebody like the Google machine, real quick. That was X Men fifty three or fifty four. It was fifty three that it happened. Uh, I, I need to comment on the fact that my man Living Good named his son Cable Nathaniel Day Spring Living Good. Your son is Day. Ah, oh, the rap possibilities. Your son has a, possibly the best rapper name I've ever seen. <laughs> Day Spring Living Good. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. Shout to you. Shout to you. Wow. Incredible. Man. Oh my God. Um, Eric, that's great, dude. All right, so we get Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine. We get Magneto flexing again here. Um, and now we're really going to see him kind of cut loose. You mentioned earlier he didn't do a whole lot. He kind of just, like, gave us a taste. Yeah. Here he makes the fist, and this was so cool. In such a great way to show that, like, human weapons don't mean a damn thing to him. Mm -hmm. He disassembles and then turns the tank turrets at each other, and they all blow each other up, basically. Yeah, he was great. Enough. Yeah, he's not effing around. Um, no. And then his whole point here is I, I think these were tactical nukes or, like, nuclear warheads. Yeah, yeah, and he was pointing them, like, at each other, or he was about to cause nuclear warfare. Yeah, essentially, he's like, we're, we're kicking it off. So um, the X-Men show up. I love the image of Figgy, just because, like, thinking back to, like, X-Men Clone Wars 2 for Sega Genesis, yes. where Wolverine could, like, climb walls and stuff. I wonder why they sent, like, the super half B team. Like, where's Gambit? And not that I care for Gambit, but it's someone like Magneto shows up. You're sending Cyclops, Storm, and only Wolverine? All right, guys. Sure. Terrible tactician. <laughs> I, hey, I'm just saying, you know, you just lost a guy. You're big. You're kind of your brute force guy and also scientist and brains is in jail. You got not many of you left. Maybe recruit some people. I'm just saying. You're not wrong. I, I think I'd rather you be my tactician than Charlie Xavier at this point. <laughs> oh, Magneto, my greatest enemy. I'll send three of you. <laughs> at least he spares Jubilee. He's like, right. no, Jubilee, you're your child. Tomorrow. You stay here. Rogue and Gambit, you stay back in case yeah, I need you. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. You guys keep listening to the records over there in the leisure room. You're fine, right? Oh, yeah. So Magneto starts the clock. I think it started at three minutes. Now it's down to 2.30. Um, he flies out, and the X-Men, I, I love Cyclops, Mr. Tough Guy, is like, you stop, uh, surrender now or be surrendered or be taken or something like that. Uh, and Wolverine's silly, like, silly I hope Cyclops. you want to be taken. <laughs> silly, silly Cyclops. So I didn't put all the screen grabs in, but Figgy, the X-Men get their asses handed to them here. Whooped. Remember this scene? Whooped. They get whooped. They get whooped. They get their butts handed to them. Uh, I think Manita puts them in a bubble and like slams them off the ground or whatever. Um, and he kind of just like pisses off. He like yep. flies away. He's like, ha ha, the bombs will kill you. <laughs> the bombs. <laughs> so we're we're down to four seconds left. Um, of course, I, I again didn't screen grab everything this week, but Wolverine runs in with his claws and he's like, you know what? The showrunners won't let me stab people, so I'm gonna destroy another computer, thinking it's gonna stop these warheads. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. They blast off. And they're pretty much up Crap Creek here without a paddle until the Storm guy uses her immense power to go and freeze things and 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 shut everything down. I think she gets wild tired from doing this too because she almost uh, doesn't catch one. So then she falls into the water afterwards. I think from memory, this is based off memory. Dude, you're you're doing great. Yep. So so wow. basically, she's ready to like end her life. She's like, I'm gonna take one for the team here to save all of humanity. So she's going to do the sacrifice play, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he's like, no, Storm, don't do it. She's like, sorry, Professor, I can't. Is this the point where she takes off her X things and she just shuts them down? She's like, no, I'm not answering. Sorry, guys. I, I think she chucks it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we get another one of these great kind of fades I mentioned, like earlier with Magneto. Yeah. Where you get like the Xavier animation. I guess it's transposed is the right word over top of Storm. And he's like, no, Storm. No don't. need for self-sacrifice. I'll teach you what Cerebro knows. Yeah, he's like, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yo, slow down there, Turbo. Um, uh, four Feathers in the house. What's up, man? What's going on? He said, sorry to be late. Dude, there's no such thing as late. We're happy you stopped by at all, buddy. Yeah, um, yeah. Come through, bro. Oh, and you were at the playground? Oh, dude, that's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Gotta love chilling, man. Um, I'll actually share with everybody here who's catching the replay. Uh, my uh, sister actually just gave birth to uh, her second child, so I have a new niece in my family now. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Very excited. Awesome. Little Chloe. So, um, Welcome to the world, Chloe. 
she was literally just born yesterday. So awesome. they are still held up in the hospital, but everybody seems healthy so far. So awesome. That's great. Yeah, man. Very happy that I'd share that little bit of personal information. But so yeah, so Storm basically uh is the hero. She's the goddess. She more or less, as you mentioned earlier, Figgy, she basically uh first moves the the missiles so they don't come straight back down where they were aimed for. And then she uses her, I guess, electric powers to more or less shut down like the CPU inside, or whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. Um, which then they go into the ocean. But Figgy, you got this next narration, buddy. You said it earlier. What happens to Storm next? She passes out and she falls towards the water and then or toward and then Wolverine's like, nah, nah, that's not gonna happen. And he catches <laughs> her, and then yeah, they kind of they don't smell their first real defeat, but they're like, Man, we suck. <laughs> 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 Professor X gives them encouraging words like, "No, don't worry, my X Men. Magneto's just really better than y'all." And yeah, when in reality, he's like, "Don't worry, I have those backup X Men teams I can get later if you guys die." Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got those other teams. Oh, so let me not tell you about the the other team I sent to Krakoa. Whoops. <laughs> so good. Oh, X Men history is just so fucking. Oh, almost, so, almost dropped the on there, man. The show is just so whoops. fucking good. Biggie, <laughs> <laughs> you get me, you get me excited about this stuff, dude. Um, that's how I do, buddy. That's how I do. <laughs> so anyway, so you're right. Uh, Storm gets caught out of the air, and I love the moment between Wolverine and Cyclops here because their relationship has been built on nothing but essentially hate in the first two episodes. Yep. Into this episode as well, and he's like, "Mission accomplished, buddy." <laughs> Basically, <laughs> you pushed her to the point of no <laughs> way to go. Hilarious. She she almost died because Chuck did a bad job on who he sent here. Rogue could have taken care of it, but you know what? It's okay. We're okay. Yeah. Uh, so we basically close out, and we've mentioned in the prior two episodes, Figgy. Uh, one of the awesome things about the show, obviously, is the fact that it's episodic. Yes. And we get this great moment here where, again, we're seeing the episodic nature where uh, basically Magneto's watching on from afar, and he's like, okay. You guys are trained relatively. These are well. your people. He's this is who I'm fighting up against. He's like, all right, Charles, but like, why use them for against me? Why not use them in our fight? And, exactly. Which so, funny because I thought this episode and the next episode ran together. So I, in my head, they're both one episode. Oh. Ah, so okay. I was about to get into the whole like rogue coming through and everything's on fire and then her being like, hey, Cyclops, let me borrow this for a second, and then stupidly not knowing what to to do. <laughs> and just like flailing your eyes all over the place, it is nuts. But I'm glad that you will get to talk about that. Yeah, man. And, and, that and, is a good one. And don't do that. I only have was it 77 episodes of content here. Don't 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 bring another one into this one now. Come on. No, no, no. Don't won't do that. No, I won't do that to you. By this rate, <laughs> by this rate, I'll be collecting social security by the time I finish the show. And uh, people have actually asked Figgy if we'll do uh, Spider Man after this. So. Uh, if you want to take on Spider-Man, because it's, okay, here's what I like: the difference between the two animated series, and people may not agree. I liked how X-Men did their parts, but then they didn't overdo it. You'd only get five parters like, you know, once in a blue moon. I think Spider-Man, the animated series, at one point, it might be season three or two, where every episode is a part one to five of some grandiose story, and then it just does it again. <laughs> and it's madness i can't with that season whatever season i think it's a season with it goes spider slayers then like morbius and then spider-man getting his six arms and that's all one season yep and you're like no 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 like, this is too, i can't this is too much but and that trend continued because then you had secret wars yes and then and you had like seven oh gosh. And, and what, was, what was the this uh, wasn't in the spider verse but like whatever yes. i was preparing them for yeah it was secret wars into basically spider carnage and then come on it was just so I think the only break episode was just like the one parter Hydro Man episode. Yep, I think you're right. Like there wasn't much there weren't many standalone Spider-Man episodes. Oh, the one with the kid. But that even that was a part of something. Oh, dude, that was a dark ending that So episode. dark. So we don't people don't talk about how we'll get into that. We'll get into that. <laughs> I'll be back for that one. When you get into Spider-Man, I'll be back. For we that. might just do a special episode just on the darkness of the end. The of darkest that. episode of Spider-Man ever? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Oh, it's terrible. All right. I shouldn't laugh at it, but I do. I, um, I laughed at it. Right. So major cameos. There weren't a whole lot in this episode. Uh, Cameron Hodge will pop up later on in the show. Sabretooth we used as a cameo in episode one. So he was already mm -hmm. kind of brought up. So I didn't consider him a cameo here. Although he obviously, as you mentioned, pays off for the next episode of the season. Which brings us, Figgy, to our favorite character, quote, and moment, and then overall thoughts. So, Sarah, you're the guest. Kick us off. Who was your favorite character in this episode number three, Intermagneto, and why? 
Magneto hands down because it's his introduction to the show. He comes off really powerful and like he's not uh, anything to be messed with right now. He he if you don't know his story and where he goes to later on in the series because I will speak to a certain I'll speak to a certain portion of the series that I personally did not love okay. and it it's it's when it's when they get stuck in the savage land. That's yeah. all I'll say. That was just like ah. Why this again? But Magneto, when he was introduced, I was just like, oh boy, this is very much like the guy who I saw in the video game who told them, welcome to die. And he seems very intimidating, like he's about to show them that. I was very happy. My favorite quote is Beast when he's in a courtroom, obviously, because it's just very, you know, heartfelt. You're a little kid, you're watching this, you're like, why is this blue thing speaking so intelligently? This is great. (laughs) Maybe I'll go and find this stuff and read it when I'm older, if I can remember it. Exactly. Favorite moment of the episode? Real real, real quick, I got to jump in real quick. You know, the funny thing is you're 100% right because even as I got older, I was re-watching this on like, you know, DVD or, you know, whatever, VHS. um, Often I'd be like, oh, who's Alfred Lord Tennyson? Or, oh, who said that quote? And like, I'd be Googling it and like, so yeah, you're right. It definitely opened up your mind more to literature in a lot of ways. You know how many things that I know just because of the Simpsons and not actual fact? (laughs) just, Just Simpsons. And it's like, wow, that helped me in life. And it's the Simpsons. Wow, look at that. So, um, favorite moment, Magneto showing up, but I think the missile portion and that whole like strenuous port on the team and Cyclops leading his two piece against a very powerful person that really easily could use your whole squad and and not calling it right. And that was just kind of like your first, your second bad, like your your second sign of questionable leadership, mm-hmm. you know, and like showing you that not everyone's perfect and you're not gonna get like your happy endings every week. And uh, closing thoughts on this episode leaves you wanting more, but not as good as Night of the Sentinels. And why? Because Night of the Sentinels was like, wait, actually, no, sorry. If I'm trying to remember, no, that's how they end season one. Okay, I won't go there. Yeah. All to say, uh, yes, it's good, but there's other ones where you're like, oh, yeah. If you, uh, I'll tell you what, Figgy, if you enjoyed the finale episode, We'll have to talk later on. My my thought process is I'd like to bring back multiple season one guest hosts for that final episode. So I know Art wants to come on. Dante wants to come on. We'll bring it back for that episode too, sir. I'll be done, yeah. Awesome, Because it had a lot of finality in it. So it was, yeah. Definitely does. Great. Yep. So so yeah, great, great selections, man. For me, keeping it brief, um, favorite character had to be Storm. You know, Magneto was awesome. But Storm is just just so friggin' epic. Taking over at the end. She was going to literally do the do do that all will put myself out for the team play you know she's going to basically sacrifice herself and, and so she saves the day loved her um favorite quote and again i with making the episode i always have to write it down or, or take a screenshot magneto love this quote oh what a brave new world that has such people in it <laughs> and he's laying that down because he thinks they're there to join him then he's like i'm just gonna trash you instead so good. <laughs> and so good. and fa- favorite moment, again, it's so hard with these episodes because there's just so many. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the Beast one's an amazing selection. I agree there. I, I love Beast show- basically ignoring the guards being racist jerks. Man, that's <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, whatever. That's great. Um, but I, I, I really think that at the end, the moment where Wolverine first, like, turns the Cyclops and shows that, like, he doesn't hate him. Mm. and he calls him buddy and then storm exhausts herself i I thought that was a nice little exchange at the end right there greatness yeah it's great all around so yeah so overall again closing thoughts on the episode um it does its job you know the first episode is very much the pilot this episode sets the tone for the rest of the season bringing in the big bad of magneto and then of course as you mentioned in, in a very eloquent manner earlier figgy that you know you you have these two different ideologies that you could probably look at both of them and say they both have a reason for thinking the way they think. Yes. You know, and, and, and that's the beauty of this show is that it brings in those real life sort of concepts where we all sit down and say, you know, wh- wh- what side am I on? It's like civil war for the Avengers, my team, Iron Man or my, my team, ca- team cap. Like mm-hmm. it makes you think. And I think anything that's literary or anything that, that's in a, in a TV show or a movie, if it makes you think they did their job well. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. They did very, very well with this. Um, 
cannot complain at all about this episode. Again, it leaves you wanting more. Uh, a great third episode of a great season of the show. Um, I personally feel like the show after this season kind of eh, and doesn't last as well as do, sorry doesn't age as well as season one, but the show does age well. Yeah. So, so I'm just hoping that in with the bring back of X Men '97, shout to you, Bo. Uh, that I do get my wish of getting certain people added to the team, and that is all. I'll, I'll be happy with that. Maybe a brown suit Wolverine appearance. That'd be sick. Ooh, now, now you're really making me think here, man. Now the wheels are turning. I mean, they kind of have to at some point. He's not going to be in blue and yellow all the time. because. Yeah. And it seems like there's a lot of costume changes in 97. So, Well, yeah, right? So, like, Storm has her hair. Like, they got to do, like, because you got to think about it. The way they end it, in a way, but then they do, they end it in a way so that it's a like it's at after blue and gold and like around that time around X Men two hundred, but it's still X Men blue and gold. So then you're wondering, are they going to do Mutant Massacre in the show? Definitely. Are they going to do Inferno? Are they going to do Fall of the Mutants? Because those are the three majors. Those are the three majors before it goes into Muir Island, and then Xavier splits the team because there's so many X Men. So if they do that. There are key people missing, and I want to know how they're going to do that. Bring That's them in, all. right? <laughs> Bring so. them, pick, pick them up. <laughs> pick, yeah, you know, like, anyways, I'm excited because Archangel's already Archangel, so we can't have him lose his wings and mute massacre. So it's, it's just like a lot of yeah. ah, 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 excited. They excited. did a lot of stuff early on because yeah. they never anticipated this, this coming up later. So I want to see where they're going to go. Ultimately, I see them just doing Fall of the Mutants and then doing the Outback X Men, which would be great. But we'll see. Well, we know uh, if anybody hasn't caught it over on the Equation podcast, we we're very fortunate to have Bo, the writer of New of X Men '97, on the showrunner and writer of X Men '97. Yeah. So go check that out. Obviously, he didn't give us all the tea, but he he gave us a lot of a lot of cool bits and a lot of a lot of foreshadowing. So. Great guy. He was an excellent guest for us on the Fiddy Equation yeah, podcast. That was great. So that was great. Check that out. So, Fiddy, we're at the end, buddy. If you could, please, sir, uh, share your socials with the audience and please tell us, you know, what your next project is that you're working on. Where can they see you next? All right. Uh, this is going to be fun. So, you guys can all go ahead and go and Google that name that you see there, right there, this one, and you will find all of me that's on ig that's on facebook that's on youtube i'm coming back to youtube but very very slowly most of my mainstay stuff is on ig where you'll see all this and more um currently working on a collection video um and a few other things but yeah i'm around that's awesome yeah and again you're a multiple podcast you're a busy guy yeah, I have the Geektastic Cypher podcast. That's every Wednesday here on YouTube um, via the Free X Agents uh, channel. There's also Chop Vision on Sundays at 7. There's Infinity Equation that I am a part of, but at the moment on hiatus because my wife is, I'm expecting my second child. So, you know, Friday nights, I'm usually helping her and stuff, but I'll be back very, very shortly. But yeah, I still pick up Infinity Equation. There's many things there. I'm putting together an album. I'm working on music. I'm, a, I'm, I'm busy. But I'm happy to be busy. And happy Which again is a reason why I thank you greatly, sir, for being here. I know your time is precious, so you're spending it with me. And yeah, but Tim, I love hanging out with you, man. Like this is the, when you asked me about this, I was like, wait, hold on, I haven't seen you forever, and you want to talk about X Men? <laughs> that you'll always get a free hour out of me if we're talking. About that. That's not a question. <laughs> well, thank you, man. I, I really gotcha. appreciate that. Um, in terms of my stuff, people who watch this channel already know Instagram disabled underscore twelve. Post in the oh uh, a figgy. I post mm -hmm. my figure Friday photos. Oh, uh, you man. Post your... Team Photo Fridays. Yes. Which has caught on. And I listen, I've been doing it almost two years straight every Friday. I haven't ran out of teams yet <laughs> to take pictures of because I, I kind of keep it to Marvel Legends comic book based teams uh, running out of ideas like very quickly. Like <laughs> Marvel needs to finish some teams because I'm like at the point where I'm just like, okay, we're throwing this together. So. It's, it's like I said earlier, I went with this animated series idea because there's like 77 episodes or something, yeah, you know, great. whereas if you have a finite, but no, you'll, you're, you're, you're a very intelligent, uh, very, very well-spoken geek like we all are. So I'm sure you'll figure it out, man. I'll find a way. I'll you'll find, find a way. way. Life finds a way. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, other than that, you know, you guys who watch the channel, you know, uh, usually twice weekly toy hunts. Sometimes we talk about new figures. This is kind of taking the place of the live stream because I 
want to kind of kick this project on. But I did want to share this, Figgy, because I'd be remiss if I didn't. So uh, I was actually invited this weekend to go to my favorite local uh, toy, st- uh, toy show, which is uh, the VR Hobbies Lehigh Valley Card, Comics, and Toy Show. Um, this was taking place sporadically throughout uh, the pandemic once things got a little bit safer. Uh, this will be the biggest show they've done. They've maxed out the number of tables they can have. It's going to be in Palmer, Pennsylvania. It's kind of between Allentown, East, and Bethlehem area. Uh, okay. It's this Saturday, 10 to 2. You can pay extra to get in there at 8 if you want for VIP time. Um, check out the VR Hobbies website. There are some special guests, cosplayers, celebrities that are going to be there as well. Um, yeah, New York Giant. Stuff. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, Scott Beatty. What? <laughs> There's some people showing up, but it's at the Charles Crin Center in Palmer, PA. Check that out. If you want more information, go to vrhobbies.shop. Uh, you can Google VR Hobbies or check out their Instagram page. Uh, also, shout out to Kevin, who's running the show, who did basically invite me to go to the preview night tomorrow night. It's my first time going to preview night. Um, so I'm going to try as hard as I can to shoot over there after work tomorrow night, film a toy hunt so people can see what's there, mm-hmm. upload it tomorrow night, so that mm. people can see what's there ahead of Saturday morning. That's nice. Great. That's good on you, man. I'm going to try. Obviously, we have Infinity Equation tomorrow night. Check that out. I'll be live with Dante. Um, it, it's going to be juggling a lot of balls to get all that done in one night, but I'm going to give it a shot and try. So check it out. If not, I'll have a toy hunt out on Saturday, and I'll be there. So come hang out and say hello. I tend to be in my little world when I'm looking through that little phone thing, but mm. if you're there, people, come say hello. Say what goes on. I, I love talking about toys, action figures, and obviously X-Men. So Figgy. You are the ultimate gentleman for coming on, man. Love hearing your thoughts and your ideas on X-Men. Love looking forward to seeing your other projects coming up. Again, check out all Figgy's socials. Check out all the different podcasts that he's on. Uh, dude is so well-spoken and what he knows things about. And Thank you. I can't wait to see more you talk about music, too, because I got some of that in your podcast last night as well. Yes, yes, I, I do do many tidbits. I don't really talk about the music too much. Shout to Boog. Um, I do do music for uh, ACBA Boog. For his uh, videos, so I'll send him beats and he'll get those through. And there's other things that we're working on. But uh, quickly before I go, I'd like to say a big shout out to my uh, little Shi'ar princess, Lilandra, who is giving her mother hell to sleep right now. But she is my <laughs> she is my everything and the reason. As you can see, we're an X Men loving family in this house. So uh, that is why she got her little Empress name, and uh, maybe her sister will follow through in the future. We don't. So know. incredible. That's how you know this man's a real X Men fan right there. Yeah. He shares it with the family. <laughs> yeah, I got it. You got it. But thanks for having me, man. I love, I love this idea, and I'm, so, I can't believe, I can't believe no one has thought of it. And just good job, good job. I appreciate it, and it's, it's something fun to do. You know, it's just like with toy hunting. I just, it was something I wanted to do. It's fun, and whether we get five people or five hundred people watching, to me, I like bringing people on, talking toys, talking X Men. It's mm. been a great time. So everybody, if you're new, please consider. Hitting that subscribe button. It's free for you. doesn't cost you anything. Helps us grow the channel tremendously on the march to 5,000 subscribers. Go ahead and hit that bell for notifications. The week actually bell. notifies you and tells you when we post new content on the channel, like our weekly toy hunts, reviews, and live streams. Leave a comment down below. Hit that like button. And for daily toy content and daily toy updates, try checking us out over at Instagram and Twitter, just about underscore 12. Hey, everybody. If you're going toy hunting this week, please try to remember the three Ps of the toy hunt. Patience. Persistence. Most of all, politeness. Take care, stay healthy. We'll be seeing all of you at the pegs. Hey. Thanks, Biggie. Peace, take care. Bye, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you.